I, I'm very, very pleased and honored to um, invite up my colleague and friend and partner in crime, Dr. Tanya Fancher. She is the Associate Dean of Workforce Innovation and Community Engagement at the UC Davis um, School of Medicine. Is that right? Or at UC Davis? She's coming up. She's going to cut me off. School of, School of Medicine. Thank you. And um, she founded and currently leads UC Davis Pathways for Learners Committed to Primary Care and Underserved Populations. And um, she's just doing awesome work in general. So thank you, Tanya. Thank you, Annette. Yes. <laughs> Well, thank you, um, and thanks everyone for being here. And I would say that I said um, cotton candy, which I think is also not a food and sort of disgusting now. Um, and, and, and I have to admit that the last time I was behind one of these things in the Mandavi Center, I had ripped off the last page of what I was supposed to say. So I hope that doesn't happen again, but if it does, please do forgive me. Um, so as you heard a little bit about, we now have a center for a, a diverse healthcare workforce. This center is funded by HRSA, and it's truly a collaboration with our colleagues at the School of Nursing, as well as with UC San Diego. And the reason we chose to partner with San Diego is we thought about who are the groups that we are addressing, and really, who are we missing? And we're really missing probably a border population that we care for here in Sacramento. So they bring that richness to us. And, and I hope that you are asking, why does this matter? Of course it sounds important, of course diversity sounds important, but let me just give you some background to say why this matters. So having a diverse workforce leads to better access to care. We know that the folks that choose to practice in, in the areas that are the hardest to practice in, which usually means they have the fewest clinicians, the fewest nurses, that's where, where students of color choose to go. So we need to really embrace that. And, and obviously it gives more, more options for patients. So you as a patient, you can choose who you get to see, right, in your health system. If, you're, if you have the choice to see a doctor or a nurse or a psychiatrist or a dentist that looks like you, you're gonna make that choice. So we ought to be able to create a workforce that allows for that choice. And when that happens, those folks get better care. And that just seems like the right thing to do. And I would bet that everyone in this room agrees with that. And finally, when we look at it from an education perspective, when we have a diversity of perspectives in the room, it teaches everyone to take care of everyone better. So let me show you just a couple slides about data in California. When I talk about access, we often talk about there's lots of doctors in California. I think that's true. They're just not all in the right places. So if you're a doctor, and, this, and I apologize for being very doctor-centric here, you're going to choose to go to places that you want to live. So in LA, in San Diego, San Francisco, but that's not where everyone chooses to live. So part of what we need to do is think about who are the folks that want to practice in the Central Valley or in the Inland Empire? How do we recruit those students and keep them in medical school or nursing school or dental school or pharmacy school so that they then return and practice there? When I talk about options for patients, if you just take a second and look at the differences here in California compared to the California population, and then the different health professions in California. So when I talk about access and be having choice, you can see how those options are very limited for people who live in California. But we can fix it, but the, the way we're gonna fix it is if we do it all together. And finally, um, for those of you who haven't seen this, this is the difference where the Cal Endowment looks by zip code to say, what's your life expectancy simply based on where you were born? And the life expectancy for a child who's born in Oak Park, which is where the medical center is, compared to a child who's born here in Davis in 95616, is 10 years. But it's only about 18 miles. So how do we make sense of that to say that a, a, a student or a child who lives outside of my door at the medical school, their life expectancy, simply because of where they live, is 10 years less. 
and it just doesn't strike me as fair. So I know that there's a part we can do to help to fix that, and part of that answer is workforce diversity. So as Mark alluded to, when we started to do this work, we realized there's so many programs that are happening across the causeway, right? At the medical school, at the nursing school, on campus, and this is not at all comprehensive, but it shows how much is really happening. And I think what's, what I'm not showing you is where we have not talked about it, right? So as we think about the programs that happen here on campus, the goal to have students enter professional school on campus, we probably ought to be having deeper conversations about how, do we, how can we do that better. And just a reminder to say that it's all possible, that the students are there, that we're all here, we're all incredibly committed to this work, and that we're only stronger together to make it work. And it doesn't end in college, it doesn't end at high school, it doesn't end when you finish medical school. It really needs to continue. So I would just say thanks to all of you who are here, and that as Mark pointed out, what we're trying to do is really build bridges here in our own system and regionally. And then that way, I think we will provide better care to everyone in our region. Thank you. <laughs>